Welcome to Analog Jones in the Temple of Film. I'm Steve. And I'm Matt. And we're a VHS podcast slash vlog that does kids movies for fun all month in November. Yeah, basically. Yeah, that's what we're up to. And what are we doing? Let's see, what is this one? We're doing um, all... Moonbeam! We're doing we're doing three moon moonbeamers. Moonbeamers? Yes. Uh, now, let's see. If they're coming up with the title for this, they're like, okay, we're full moon, so let's do half moon productions. But they went with Moonbeam. Yeah, I, <laughs> I guess my whole thing is on the joke is, why do you think they went with Moonbeam? Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. Like, it's because Sunbeam was too happy? Yeah, I don't know. Huh? Mo- moonbeam. I'm trying to think of, like, what, like, that could have been beyond full moon, obviously. Like, what that could have been a play on or offshoot of, but... I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. It's Chucky Band. You never know what's going yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, it's it's full moon pictures, full moon features, full moon films, depending on how you live, <laughs> depending and, on which movie it is, so... And now they're into their weird and wacky, like, aliens gone wild. And then it's just, like, girls half naked. I don't know if they're actually making those, but if you ever go to the full moon streaming, you've seen them, right? Yeah, they have, like, those clip shows, like, the aliens gone wild and stuff like that. I and, do not get that at all. Because, yeah, to me, that makes me not want to have their streaming service. I just want to put on a clip show, like, uh, on one of the one of their things that they're streaming on or whatever. Because I'm like, oh, I love full moon movies. A clip show would be great. But their clip shows aren't, like, clip shows. It's, like, 30 minutes of a movie followed by then another 30 minutes of another movie. And it's just like, well, I'll just go watch the movies if that's the one. <laughs> yeah, you want to watch, like, four minute clips right right, right. i want like, like a clip show if i'm gonna sign up for a clip show but yeah they don't do that they do 30 minute edits so don't you ever insult chucky band's intelligence i would never because he's got all of my money already yeah. like oh, he is true. my george lucas yeah. to, oh, uh, no. <laughs> he is he's got all my money and every decision he makes i'm just like yep sure i mean <sighs> here's my money take it yeah, and then, then the one he got us with twice. Look at this. He's got a copy and I've got a copy of Remote, which never came out in DVD. Yeah, it's not on yeah. Blu-ray. It's not on DVD. This one is uh, trapped on VHS or for sure. Forever. I don't think they'll ever come out with it. Well, maybe. Maybe. Well, they just got the rights back from Paramount to a lot of this stuff, so we're going to start to see it. Well, it's on Full Moon Streaming, right? Is I don't know. Is it is Remote on there? I don't know. I have no idea. I don't, I don't go, I wouldn't go to, I don't have full moon streaming right now. I had it at one point and who knows, uh, maybe I'll get it again <laughs> if it's like 99 cents a month. Um, no, I would pay two ninety nine. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I go through phases. I've yeah. had it a couple times now. I've had it twice, I think now, but then I don't have it right now. Like I just yeah. kind of go through phases of full moon streaming. I think I had it for like three months. I watched all the ones that I had like, a. I was Jones in four and then I'm like, well, the other ones I own. So what's the point? Yeah, I do the same thing with like Shudder, where it's like I'll get it for yeah. a month and I'll blow through everything I want to see, and then I'll like cancel it for six months <laughs> until I get more stuff I want to yeah. see. <laughs> so as full moon's like the same thing. It's the exact same thing, but um, with this one, yeah, I noticed it was Paramount, and so Paramount put in put out all these like Prehistoria one, two, three, uh, and then. I think, yeah, they did the Josh Kirby's and they did the remotes. So they must have made a deal with them. They're like, listen, we're going to have this huge, epic family entertainment. And we want you to distribute it, uh, Paramount, because... Or maybe Paramount came to them. Paramount might have came to them because they were so successful. I mean, 93, that was like the height of Full Moon. Like, they probably did get their 10 or 12 pictures out a year like they were aiming to do. Um, Yeah, Back in 92, 93, they were on top of the fucking world then. So that... It would, it would make sense that they would, uh, you know, go this route. because And then this was super successful, too, because Remote's only the second one, but they did Dragon World and Pet Shop and uh, Leapin' Leprechauns. Uh, so, Just, many. so many. So many. I could, there's I, I so many more. I would assume there was probably a good 20 movies in a three, four-year span. Yeah. At least. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then some of them were good, some of them were better than others, and uh, we made a joke beforehand, or at least you did, You're like, hey, did you notice they kind of slowly ran out of money throughout them all? I'm like, meh, yep. Yeah, because 93, this was, again, the second movie, this was the follow-up to Prehysteria. There's money here. There's definitely. But yeah. by the time you get to the stuff that comes out in 95, which is the last year that Full Moon did anything with Paramount, uh, you could start to see where the money's going obviously there's certain productions where there is money and then there's certain productions where there's not and 
yeah, then Castle Freak happened, and that went straight to Full Moon and not Paramount anymore, so. Oh, Castle Freak was part of... Was going to be a Paramount release. No way. But, but then the full, they just broke their nice. ties with Full Moon, and then Full Moon self-released it. Yeah, no, that's not a Paramount movie. But it was it was going to be. It was gonna it was their next one. But uh yeah, the money the money dried up and it and the whole thing the whole game changed. I can't believe they didn't want to distribute the, the nipple biting. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh I hope no one here I yeah, hope half the audience you haven't seen Castle Freak and just because I said nipple biting, now you will. Yeah, everybody's gonna go watch it. Now. Yeah, because it's amazing. They'll, they'll get full moon streaming for one month. Yes, for it. <laughs> do it. Honestly, do it. It's worth it. So with this one, did you see this as a kid? I did. Yes, yeah. this was right. one I saw as a kid, um, pretty repeatedly. This one was one I really liked as a kid a whole lot. And I was. Yeah. It's funny because I was still watching like full moon movies as a kid, but I still liked the moonbeam stuff because I was like, well, I still like kids movies too. Like I'm not too grown up for this stuff too. Yeah, I we liked it a lot. As a, I mean, it was, it's kind of obviously half of it is a Home Alone ripoff in a way. Yeah, and the other half isn't. I, it's kind of weird how this movie's structured. Yeah, it doesn't become sort of remote until the second half. Yeah, but I'm. I mean, well, I'll talk about how I feel yeah. about it. Well, I yeah, okay. So if we're walking through the video store, you can pick it up now and start to describe it. Uh, this is a freaking fantastic cover, in my opinion. Yeah, and you know, it's says comedy for the whole family, and it's got, like, the classic hero image with the kid lifting up the remote control with, like, the girl around his mm-hmm. leg. You know, very, like, heroic pose, the bad guy's reaching for him. Uh, and, uh, like, a painted image, too, which is really cool. And it says at the bottom, uh, video bonus, Moonbeam's video zone, behind-the-scenes video magazine. Um, so like the regular full moon movies, this one has the behind the scenes after, uh, yeah, I would have, I definitely probably rented this on cover. I probably was like, yeah, this one. Yeah. Because this had like the second thing, you know, like uh, in the early nineties, you know, all, all dinosaurs, early mid nineties, dinosaurs, dinosaurs, dinosaurs. But we also had a love for robots slash gadget you know, gadget things. Yeah. Like remote so, control stuff was super in. Yeah. Oh, I was so jealous of this kid and all of this his stuff. Now, being an adult rewatching it now, and I'm like, no, there's no way you had all this. But like, <laughs> unless your parents were just rich. I probably saw this movie when I was like six or seven years old, and I was like, oh my god, like <laughs> this is no. the coolest thing. Uh, yeah, I thought all his gadgets were like super dope. Yeah. Oh well, especially rewatching it now. How much did Gunther? Did you look at that as an adult and be like, "Wow, that's so Chucky Band right there"? You know, he's just like Gunther was his favorite. Even at the end of this film, which it says at the beginning to stay afterwards to see, he introduces it with Gunther. Yes. It's like, of course you did. Yeah. Well, it's the tiny thing. It's the tiny puppet in the movie. Yeah. Um. Uh, and you know, Full Moon hates tiny puppets. They yeah, never. Right. They never use. They them, never use ever. it. Um, uh, I remember there was a time, um, earlier this year, I feel like, yeah, I think it was like just early in this year that me and my buddy Chase got stoned and watched remote, uh, for the first time in like 20 years. So like, yeah. I have seen it now twice this year, but then like not for like 20 years and before that. Um, and we were watching it in like the pre stereo trailers before the movie, spoiler alert, I get, well, we'll talk about it, but whatever. Um, uh, and, uh, we just go... Man, like, Full Moon's thing is just, like, what's popular right now? Okay, make it small. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what And, like, they that's do. what prehistoria <laughs> is. That's what, like, if that's what they use this. They do, like, oh, well, Home Alone's really popular. Home Alone 2 just came out semi-recently, so let's put out this. And then they're like, all right, well, make sure there's a yodeling uh german puppet in there as well like they just have to like take everything that's popular and make a small thing out of it yeah. <laughs> oh yeah that's all right so uh why don't you read the description on this bad boy yeah so if you don't know what remote is about and you're missing out if you don't uh, you need to stop this and go watch it wherever you can find it whether buzzing his neighborhood with model planes or switching channels on the TV next door, 13-year-old Randy Mason has the world at his fingertips as long as he's got a remote in his hands. But when one of Randy's house-made gadgets winds up wiping out his best pal's science project, things suddenly and hilariously spin out of control. 
Randy retreats to his hideout, a vacant model home, only to find it invaded by a trio of bumbling burglars. As frantic friends and clumsy cops search for the missing Randy, he's forced to fall back on his own high-tech devices, remote-controlled toys, tuned for laughs and set for fun, and a side-splitting, warm-hearted comedy for every grown-up who still can't program a VCR and for every kid who can. Even a VCR reference on the back of this VHS. This movie was made for us to <laughs> Was this the one that you watched and texted me that you wanted to do a Moonbeam month? Was this the yes, one? This you, is, yeah, yeah. This so this one, our, this one got you hooked. Like, yeah. this one did it for you. Well, we, yeah, we watched it as a kid, I remember, and it kind of just disappeared from my mind for a really long time. And then uh, I was doing a top 10, um, like, family. I was doing a bunch of cover top 10s or top 5s, and one of them I wanted to do was top 5 um, straight, to, straight to video uh, kids releases. And so I was going through a bunch of these, and I f- randomly found Remote's cover, and I'm like, oh! It just, like, poof, all came back to me. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So I'd, I'd wanted to get this for the last couple of years. And then you and I went to a VHS um, little bitty show. And I saw it. I found it. I bought it. Watched it. And literally that night I go, Foo, we got to do a Moonbeam Mom. Because <laughs> I knew you had one of the prehysterias. Yeah, I've got several of the prehysterias, but I could only find one of the prehysterias. <laughs> the best one. <laughs> we'll, we'll get well, to it. We'll get to it. Uh, uh, but yeah. yeah, no, like, um, this was one that, like, kids growing up knew about, too. Like, I knew about the Full Moon movies, and that was just me. Like, I was the only one who knew about those in school. But other kids knew about this movie. I remember this was one that, like, got around. People knew what this was. Mainstream, yeah. normal kids knew what this was. <laughs> yeah, this was just one that, like, right when it popped up, it just seemed like it was easy to rent. It had little gadgets in it. Or, yeah, it, you know, was, it was an easy sell, I think. Yeah, so rented it, watched it, liked it, kind of, and then just forgot about it, and then it came all rushing back. I, I mean, and then when you pop this tape in, we get... You know, immediately, like, one of... Maybe the most popular kids' film that went straight to video, and that's Prehysteria. Yeah, absolutely. Again, that was another one that I knew a lot of normies yeah. knew about and saw, and I could talk about. I was like, oh, cool. Like, <laughs> I know the weird horror ones, but I, I can actually talk on the on the playground about these kids' movies that the Moonbeam was putting out, and that was, that was one that the normies knew about. Well, the early 90s, mid-90s, uh, the straight-to-video stuff was getting respectable, yeah. especially in the playground. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, yeah, kids knew about it. Kids rented that shit. Yeah, I remember a bunch of them. And, you know, and Moonbeam had some of these. Uh, obviously, I think Remote and Prehistoria were probably the top out of theirs. But I don't know. Dragon World always, like, caught my eye as a kid. But I don't think I ever rented it. I've definitely never seen it. Oh, it's good. It's it's pretty awesome. I don't have that one though. No, that, that, I, that movie rules. Um, yeah, uh, you know, mine that I w- I watched a lot as a kid uh, was Pet Shop, which I actually haven't seen as an adult. But uh, Full Moon just dropped that on Blu-ray. It was their follow-up Blu-ray to Prehysteria. Oh, okay. Uh, so now they're starting to go through and put these out. So I'm sure Remote's next. Well, now it's going to be next because we're bringing it up again. <laughs> and now it has to uh, But, uh, yeah, the Pet Shop was the last one to come out, and I'm excited to see it because that was one that I exhausted. And pretty stereo. So what was Pet Shop about? It was a I tiny... Mean, other al- than a Pet Shop. Tiny alien <laughs> animals, like, of course. Okay, like, tiny alien animals. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So whatever they had left over from, I don't know, no, the creatures. Toys. No, the creatures look good in that one. Uh, that was, I, I think, it was ninety four. They still had some money. Still had some money. Yeah, <laughs> that's the key. Uh, and then the next uh, trailer was odd. Uh, there goes the neighborhood with Jeff Daniels and um, oh, what's her name from Home Alone? Catherine O'Hara. Uh, yeah, Catherine O'Hara, which is awesome in Shit's Creek or Shit's Creek. Yeah, that might be her best role ever. Yeah, she's I, she was made for absurd. that. Absurd. I I don't know. I Delia Dietz and. Uh, Beetlejuice yeah, might well, be my favorite, but that's a close second. It's a close. Shits, I mean, Shits Creek. She's great in that show. It's almost like a cousin of. Yeah, they're yeah, they're related for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, I've never seen this though. I've never seen this either. But this is one Ashley talks about all the time, so I, I feel like I'm going to see it. But this is kind of a weird one to find 
I, this I feel like there goes the neighborhood might only be on VHS also. I I don't even know what the cover looks like because the trailer didn't show the cover. Yeah, I don't know what the cover looks like either. Okay, um, but I'm thinking know. that's all this an only a VHS movie, so I'll probably see it at some point. Yeah. But I have not seen it up to this point. Okay. Uh, <laughs> then, yeah, and then it went right into the feature presentation because I was expecting like three or four more trailers. <laughs> And now we're pleased to bring you our feature presentation. I oh, yeah. Yeah, because it's full moon. But they had only done the one release so far, mm-hmm. so I guess that makes sense. That Yeah, which we I found out later on when you watch the... Uh... Full uh, the Moonbeam. Um, what was it? Moonbeam video zone. Video zone. Okay, so they just call it the exact same thing. They just put Moonbeam moon instead of full moon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they had a little like. Well, you, we'll talk about it. They yeah. had that little like video that they like mm-hmm. you know cut together as the wraparound for the video zone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we go go into it, and, and this this is kind of two different movies in my opinion. First, it was. They just show like a middle school, junior high, something like that. And I don't know if you noticed, but that actually looked like someone snuck a camera onto the bell, like the last bell of school. And then they show because those kids coming out of there looked like the most realistic 90s kids I'd ever seen in a movie because most of the time they're over the top. Those kids were coming out in just like normal sweaters and. I think there's something about the cast of this movie where they all the kids do seem like really normal in this. Yes, you know what I mean. Like they're really natural '90s. Like this is what we kids today. Just so you know, this is what we all looked and sounded like (laughs) in the 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 mid '90s. I saw kids with Letterman jackets on. The the sporty kids. I saw the butt cuts all over the place. By the way, if you look in the background on the guys, butt cuts everywhere. And if you don't know what that is and you're too young, that is literally where we had a butt crack down the middle yep. and then our hair just parted. Yeah, I never did that. Never oh, did that. Matt, you didn't live until you had a butt cut. <laughs> I didn't want to do that. I, want, I had like my, I had like buzzed hair. I had like no hair. <laughs> oh, you did the buzz look? Yeah, that was my like look throughout like okay. grade school. All right. Yeah, and then I just see a bunch of them in baggy clothes and I'm like, that looks a lot like real 90s. And then, then we got the uh, black character that old white men wrote. Hey, Jamal. Randy, man. Maestro of Vanilla Ice Tray. What's happening, my friend? Hey, Judy. Judy on duty. High priestess of the ball and back. <laughs> With yeah. Jamal. Yeah. Which I was like, oh, no. Uh, and also, I noticed the uh, writer of this movie used a fake name. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Interesting. And then the real name that they say he really is in IMDb is actually another fake writer's name. And I'm like, this dude went, he doubled down on being, that's hilarious. He's like, please, I'll write all these, but don't put just don't on. put my name on it. And then the <laughs> fake name he gave, or his fake name for, well, I don't even know how to say this. It's just two fake names. It's, it's and nested within a fake it's name nested, is another, so. yeah. It's Quentin Tarantino. It, <laughs> we know. We know. We got you figured out. We we're knew just, it. We're still doing Tarantino one. He's like, uh, I want to finish Pulp Fiction really bad, but I have this great idea for a kid's um, remote movie. It's a kid who has remote control devices and he stops criminals. It's Home Alone, but with Sounds remote good. controls. Done. Uh, yeah. And then Ted... Uh, Ted Nicolau is the Nicolau. director. Yeah, he's, um, he's a real... He's he's proud of what he's done. Yeah, and like he should be because his filmography is pretty strong in terms of like the stuff that I like. He's the subspecies series director, <laughs> um, including Vampire Journals, um, and then he like also did Terror Vision, uh, Bad Channels. He's done like a lot of like my favorite movies, so he's he's fine in my book. <laughs> Terror Vision is one of my favorites, especially Crazy Grandpa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, every character in that movie is great. I I love Terry Vision. Yeah, I, Terry Vision is one of my favorites. But he did Dragon World. I saw too. Yeah, yeah. So he got definitely. roped. He got roped into the Moonbeam for a minute. <laughs> well, yeah, he was doing all the subspecies and everything, and I guess maybe he was having kids or something. He's like, I, you know what? He I did. Want, I want to do these. He did because uh, his kid is now an editor and uh, made a movie for Full Moon now. But he was like young during this time so keep it in the family and keeping it keeping it in the full moon family 
Yeah, and then well, well, and then this the first half of this movie is mostly just '90s kids goofing off. And like this is what I was gonna say at the top, but I wanted to save it for here. The remote stuff doesn't really happen until the second half, but I don't mind the first half at all. I still think it's a blast, honestly. I'm well, having fun during the first half still. The first half kind of like seems like a lot of times like it's the B roll, maybe not even the B roll, but it's just like it's them playing with the remote control stuff, which I. Th- it feels like that's what the movie should all be about. Almost like they were going to stop bullies. Yeah, yeah. Because the, we yeah. get introduced pretty early to the bully character who he messes with. But yeah, it sort of becomes like part of the group by the end of the movie. Yeah, but the bully kid like completely falls off. He's gone. Yeah, yeah. And so is Jamal. Jamal's yeah, Jamal gone. falls off. It becomes a story about him and the girl. Yeah, and even the girl during a large portion of this is gone. Because the sec- after they're they're having a blast, which playing with the toys and he crashes the airplane into Jamal's experiment. Yeah, the class project experiment thing. Then he gets suspended, and then his mom is is pissed off at him because she just got a promotion and now she's got to deal with a little Randy getting suspended, and she's like, "I'm gonna take all your remote control toys away," and he's like, "Uh oh." I'm going to hide him in this model home that I hang out in when I need to escape. And then, of course, criminals show up. And then Home Alone. <laughs> yeah, and they, they, they introduce the criminals, like, so... Like, he's flipping through channels on the TV. And I noticed that they're, like, three criminals who do a... Com- uh, what is it? Uh, a horror of comedies or something like that. Where they get caught. They forget the money. They get caught on film. And now they're going after them. So they robbed a place... And the reason the one guy forgot the money is because he was looking at a comic book. Sounds about right. Yeah. Uh, the the two guys, so like the main sort of bad guy in this is John Deal, who you've seen in stuff before. He's Miami Vice. Yeah. Is, uh, he's uh, he's in Jurassic Park 3. Yeah, it's a yeah. second appearance of John Deal. Yeah, yeah. yeah in our podcast. Um, so he's, he's around. But the other two guys, uh, who are Tony Longo and Stuart Fratkin are both the criminals in the original pre-hysteria. Yeah. So they literally just brought them back, like, to do the same bit in a movie that wasn't even a year later. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Tony Longo was coming off of First and Ten, which was that HBO series that helped launch HBO that no one talks about anymore. Because he was 80, 84 to 91. They did, like, a 30... It's basically what Ballers is now, except it was all oh, really? comedy. Yeah, I, I forget the other, but it had the reason it's not talked about much anymore is because it had a young ex football player in it as their number two credit. Some guy named OJ Simpson. Mm, I don't know. I, I guess I guess why. he doesn't like. I guess uh, HBO doesn't HBO like to doesn't remember, remember him now. Associated with that. I don't even think it's on uh, HBO streaming. I yeah, I doubt it I would be if, that, if that's the case. They're trying to like. What, uh, what sports rug. show are you talking about? <laughs> Arliss? <laughs> I know. I never realized. Like, HBO seems to, like... They love sports they love comedies their sports and things. Comedies. First and Ten, Arliss, you have Ballers. Then you have, like, what is it? Where they... NFL training camp? I don't even yeah, know what that's Inside called. the NFL. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Brian Gumble, Real sports. Yeah, Brian all Gumbel. that stuff. Yeah, man. They like sports on HBO. Yeah, it's, but I mean, it's worked. Look at them. <laughs> so they're giant. But yeah, I guess they don't like to forget that anymore. I also had the big guy from uh, Revenge of the Nerds and Bloodsport in it. Oh, okay. Well, I always forget his name. Yeah, now. I don't know what I'm saying. I guess he's, he lives here. He's in, he's in town. And I guess oh, he's the a, nicest guy. Is he a Chicago born man? Yeah, no, he, li- he lives here now. I don't know if he's from here, oh, okay. but he lives here now. And apparently he's the nicest guy. Oh, I'm the sure. The big dude from, yeah. Well, I guess this goes back to one of our, you know, in Tarantino month. If the, um, Weirder looking slash more interesting slash sometimes even ugly people are always the nicest. Yeah, yeah. I, and I, he's I, just a big, big ass character actor, but he's yeah. like a nice guy apparently. <laughs> yeah, Tony Longo. Uh, he passed away not too long ago, like 2016 or 17. Really, I know. That. Yeah, he was. He got. He was. His health was bad, mm. but he still tried to keep going. I just think, you know, he was more of an 80s, 90s character, actor. Yeah, just... I remember seeing him in a lot of, like, kids' movies from yeah. this time. Um, and he's good. He's funny. You know, he does he does that, like, 
90s kids movie stick really well. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, can't blame him. No complaints. Yeah, but they, they get caught in this model home, and most of the time, Randy is hiding in the attic, kind of, like, trying to signal people to, like, help him or whatever, and then I guess, it, like, the last 15 minutes of this film, he goes, you know what? I'm going to use my toys to stop these criminals, catch them, and get out. Yeah. And we have all kinds of wacky stuff with it. Like, even at the end, cutting off the uh, John... Uh, yeah, it's John Deals, like, cutting his hair Down with the, the airplane. Yeah. Like an opposite mohawk, yeah. I was like, oh, that wouldn't really work. That would really hurt. Yeah, it would take skin if that was how that was going to go. But it's a kid's movie. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of funny shenanigans. Also, like, this movie... Like, it's kind of two movies in one, but it moves at a breakneck pace. Like, this movie's 80 minutes solid, and it just, like, flies by. Like, yeah. Yeah. I, I was never bored. I just I just sat down and tried to figure out, I'm like, wait a minute, so is this going to be the bullies? Because that's what confused me when I first started watching this the first time. I was like, oh, man, I remember this whole thing being in a house and him using toys to, like, beat up the bad guys. And then when I rewatched it, I'm like, no, nah, it's only like maybe the last 20 minutes, 15. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, so it's, I always wanted that fake Godzilla, which is really close to the Godzilla, almost like suable. I mean, I'm part of me wonders, like maybe Toho just wasn't paying attention. Yeah, right. Because they're usually all over that shit. Because that's, that looks like Godzilla. Well, that's a tie between, or that's like a, a tie between the two movies we're talking about because Prehysteria 3 has the Godzilla reference too. Oh, that's right. Yeah, at the very end. Yeah. And that one's one of those, like, I, like that was one when I actually rolled my eyes. Yeah, like, that was oh. like, like a groan word. But like, yeah, that's funny. Like Full Moon had a weird boner for Godzilla stuff. Well, I mean, you know, what, what Godzilla did is they took giant things and they put men in suits and what Full Moon does is we'll take giant things and make them tiny. Yes, we have to make them small. <laughs> so, make it all small. Make it small. <gasps> oh, it worked really well. Slashers movies, we can do that. Make them tiny dolls. <laughs> Remember when they did, uh, they were like, Universal Monsters, like uh, Dracula, Frankenstein, let's make them small. And then they had like little people as the actors in that one. Which one was that? The Creeps from 97. Oh. <sighs> I might, I that I might have missed that. Oh, it's a blast! It's so fun, such a fun movie. But yeah, make them small. <laughs> make they them took small. the Universal monsters and literally made them small. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, and I'd I'd probably watch it now and be like, greatest idea I've ever seen. Yeah, no, it works. <laughs> <laughs> they, they get it right when when they get it right, they get it right, man. Oh yeah, this this is such a this is full of so many like uh oh. Do, 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 do. Yeah, you know, I mean, like moments. If you can, if you can stomach like a movie with a lot of like wacky sound effects and people get hit in the head, then you'll like the, you know. But if you're Ding. not, gonna, yeah, if you're not gonna like that, then you're not gonna like this movie. You know what I mean? Like you gotta yeah. be into oh, that yeah. specific kind. of Almost stuff. like TV movie comedy. Yeah, yeah. Where where like they're going to play the wacky music over the jokes, yeah. just because. They also want five-year-olds to get it, and yeah. basically with five-year-olds, you have to tell them, this is a joke now, and they're like, ah! <laughs> Sometimes I just think, like, on the daily, like, I just need that. Like, I feel like I would appreciate more films if they just, like, told me what to do. <laughs> All these ambiguous I, films, I'm like, eh. No, I, I think you should really like Hollywood movies right now, especially when they're giving their, uh, their like, exposition. This oh, is, yeah, like, yeah, where they yeah. turn to the camera... This that's is the, why this bad guy that's the is problem. bad. I liked when like movies like this, where it was just like wackadoo and like it, you know, it told you to have a good time. Now they like would literally like look in the camera and like just explain it to you. Now that's the difference. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, I guess I don't. They're like, well, now. we need people in China to get it because that's where all the money is. <laughs> that's right. So let me just explain to you culturally what's yeah. happening here. That's a little different from what you're used to. Yeah, just a guy looking at the camera with like a a China, you know, like a Chinese uh, flag, like a shirt. He's just like. I love China, <laughs> and that's let me like, explain the movie to you. That's like those Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle uh, new ones. They're oh, like that. Yeah. They're super like a commercial for China. 
Well, like, like they even stick the NBA in the second one. Yeah. Which China loves the NBA, except right now because of the protests, but whatever. But <laughs> at that time, it was just like, look, Ninja Turtles, NBA. Uh, uh. You like CG Green Monsters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, so, the, I mean, uh, Tony Longo, I think, is just, like, all the stuff he does in this, all the physical comedy. Because I remember him in, um, what was it, Angels in the Outfield. Mm. He was the uh, big catcher. So he came into this, like, in my childhood, I saw him in so many movies. Now, I might not have known his name as a kid. Oh, I yeah, I definitely certainly knew his face. I don't think I knew his name until I watched this again. You know, I was like, oh, that's that guy. Okay, cool. <laughs> Uh, but I recognize his face, for sure, from all those kids' movies. Yeah. My favorite line in this was, Wow, you're incredible, Randy. And she looks at him, his like little love interest. I don't know her name, but she went on to be in uh, the Medicine Woman show. Oh, nice. Good for her. What was that called? Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman? Dr. Line? Quinn Medicine Woman. Yeah, she was in it. But she's like, Wow, Randy, you're incredible. And he just like looks at her really awkwardly and goes, Thanks. I've been modifying the controls. <laughs> I'm like, ooh. You're incredible, Randy. I've been modifying the controls to give her more aerobatic capabilities. You're funny, Randy. What'd you do that for? Such scandalous lines here. Like, she wants him in this movie, and, and he oblivious. is not picking it up. And I'm well, if she like, had circuitry. Yeah, if, he, if she was a remote control, he'd be able to figure her out. But uh, as a human, he can't figure her out. No, and I think as a kid, I related to that. Yeah. I was like, I can't talk to people. So I feel his pain. <laughs> I feel yeah. her pain, too, because she's trying to communicate with him, and he's not responding. Uh, and I was over there talking about f- full moon movies on the playground, and uh, nobody was responding. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow, Matt. Can't relate to both of them. Wow, Matt, that sweater looks great. Thanks. Have you seen the latest full <laughs> Have you, <laughs> have you seen movie? Subspecies 3? <laughs> it's one of my favorites. <laughs> How about Terror oh, Vision? Oh, <laughs> God. What it's a miracle this? that I like have friends today, <laughs> honestly, uh, because it was rough for like fifteen years, I'd say. <laughs> yeah. uh, it happens. <laughs> and then you find your weirdos and you make podcasts with them. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I don't I don't have much more to say about this because it's just like a uh, a fun wacky '90s kid comedy that. Yeah, I mostly enjoyed. I mean, I actually I don't have any real other than I wish it didn't take like forty minutes to get to the remote stuff because I just want more criminals, but I don't really have anything bad. Yeah, I mean, like yeah, like I said, like it does take a while. Like you're saying now, like yeah. it takes it takes a while to get there. But like I didn't care. I was just like I'm having fun watching this. I watched it twice this year, and mm. I had no problem. Like I didn't care. Like I had a good time both times. Was it better uh, sober or stoned? Sober actually really uh stoned i went down too many nostalgic like rabbit holes where then i like stopped paying attention to the movie yeah and then 20 minutes later you're like wait a minute and i'm like wait who's this How character are they in model home? yeah yeah exactly <laughs> so um you know yeah. sometimes i'll get stoned and i'll lock into a movie sometimes i'll get stoned and be like what else can i think of <laughs> what does this remind me of <laughs> yeah and then the end when we got into the video zone and you know i already talked about Chucky Band and Gunther hanging out. Which, by the way, that Gunther doll always singing the song. Yeah. That's that, like, really? Randy, you need to stop using that. I was afraid he was going to get caught. Oh man, that just reminded me like of the dope ass animated opening that this a- and oh, ending opening yeah. and ending that this has. Uh, love that! What a great choice. Yeah, I'll play that over us talking right now. That that kind of stuff. It was really long too. The first one. Oh yeah, and it's padding it out. Yeah, because like, they out. just yeah. hit eighty minutes on this movie. <laughs> like they just make eighty. Yeah. Uh, but uh, well, I think that's why they show so much at the beginning. I think they did all the criminal stuff, edited this film together, and went, "Oh shit, we're only at sixty minutes." Yeah, probably honestly, uh, because it yeah this the credits are really long. 
They're awesome, though. I love them. No, but, <laughs> but uh, they do eat up a good chunk of the runtime. Yeah, and then then they they show the making of this, which is is really fun. You get to see like Tony Longo like eating beans and a Twinkie or something like yeah, that off, off the, the ground. ground. Yeah, I guess it just possessed him all at once to start dun- dunking the Twinkie and and mixing it all together. And all of us on the set were just holding back from dying laughing as he did it. <laughs> So that was fun. You could tell the crew was having a lot of fun doing this. Yeah, they believed in this. This mm-hmm. wasn't like a cash grab for anybody. Even like Ted Nicolau, who was like doing like straight up horror movies, was like, no, I'm going to do a kid's movie and I want to try to do it right. Like, and it's like, oh man, this is like really nice and endearing to see that all these people care about this project. Yeah, it's, I, I, I could tell throughout this entire film. I was like, yeah, they're having a lot of fun doing this. Uh, yeah, sure, some of it's padded out, but I mean, that's kind of what happens in these TV straight yeah, video movies. Yeah, they, in the end, they're making a buck, but still, like, you might yeah. as well have fun doing it. And like, yeah, I really liked, uh, I really liked having the videos on at the end of this because I'm used to seeing it with the other full moon movies. But it was nice to see like with the kids movie, and like this would have been a good gateway if I wasn't already watching the regular full moon movies. This would have been a good gateway to get me into films. Like, I'm glad this exists for like little '90s film nerds to, you know, find no, their love of making movies. I really think this is part of what made me want to. Um... Like, get into the behind the scenes, look up stuff like that. I don't know if it was so much exactly Full Moon in Moonbeam Video Zone stuff, but I think it's got to be one of the big players where I always wanted to know how they did stuff. You know, like, my brothers and I always trying to guess how someone would die in a film. How did they do that? I mean, I think this is part of it. And they kind of, tiny bit, show some of the stuff, which is fun. But he also talks about, and I always liked this as a kid... Like when he's like, oh, and we're going to do Prehistoria 2, and we're going to do the Dragon yeah, Ball yeah. and stuff. He like, gives you was... the list of what's coming next, yeah. Yeah, he, he's giving you tasters. I mean, this is how, you know, we get hooked on heroin and stuff. He's yeah. just like, here you go, kid, here's a little... Yeah, I used to get, like, especially in the late 90s when I was super, super into Full Moon and that they were still cranking out new shit, like, like if Witch House or something came out or Dead yeah. Out the Living or, like, one of those in the late 90s. And he would, Charles Band would be like, oh, we're making this movie, this movie, this movie, mm-hmm. this movie next year. And he would like, they would show like the art, like the concept art and stuff for the movies. That I would great. get so Love that. that was like my, like, like the way the nerds feel now about like Marvel movies. That was my Marvel stuff that back in the day. Well, it came after the movie. Post, yeah. Post credit uh, video zone. Yeah, that was, it's. I mean, Chucky Band should be that, and He-Man, Canon Films, should be the ones. I mean, Marvel, that's how they were inspired. <laughs> yeah, I think so. But it was. It was my, like, it was my, like, crack. I was like, what else yeah. you got, Charlie? What else you got? <laughs> I need more. <laughs> Make more shit small, Charlie. <laughs> All right, let's go to... Oh, yeah, and then they showed the trailer for Prehistoric. Pre-Asteria yeah. again. Because they always do, the video zones always do the coming attractions, but they had only made one movie yeah. so far. <laughs> so they had to show the same trailer again. So I, I assume he was just like, all right, well, we can pad the movie. We bought, you know, we got to do that again, too. But he's just like, now they definitely won't forget it. They'll see it at the beginning. It bookend it. Yep. With Pre-Asteria. Yeah. And, and that video zone's pretty nice, too, because it's like 20 minutes. Like it's it's a fourth of the runtime of the movie. Yeah, love is it. the is the video zone. I love love it. it. Love it. Love it. Uh, okay, well that's gonna end it. With, oh no, it's not. Uh, we'll go on to the museum. This is the second time I've had to reclaim my property from you. That belongs in a museum. So do you. This is part of the show where we put something in the museum. We're like, Andy, go out in the film jungle, bringing it back, good or bad. Uh, I think I'm going to go with uh, the... So when he's on the remote control on the TV, uh, I forget who they were called. But can you tell me who the hell... It was, what, Brother Eli? Money up. This young math professor from two weeks... Our sermon today, brothers and sisters, is a story of David and Goliath. Hallelujah, Brother Milo. Praise the Lord. Oh, Brother Milo. Do you remember the priest that was on there? He kept flipping 
uh, to the oh, channels. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And there was just, like, this thing. It's just like, oh, hello, Brother M- uh, Milo. And I'm, like, looking at that. That's got to be someone in full moon. And it is. They're just doing something like yep. that. And it's and the production And they brought designer. it, like, three times they used it. Yep. And I loved it so much because I looked the first couple times they did it in the one scene. I loved it. Then they brought it back when he was going through the TV. And then I think the criminals are on a TV or something and see it. And I'm like, I, I wanted I wanted them to keep going in order of the brother Milo. Like, he would have been preaching at the beginning, selling something at the end, or, you know, something like that. It's like, you want more, Brother Milo. Watch the <laughs> Brother Milo TV series or something. And it's just um, the production designer. It's and, just the production designer just having a cameo in the movie, which is so funny. Yeah. It's like, well, we need something on TV. Got it. Yeah, let's do this weird thing. Yeah. That's a very Ted Nicolau choice, I feel like. Because, like, like, Bad Channels is a lot like that. And, like, Bad Channel, Vision. Terror Vision, yeah. Yeah, so... Absolutely, that was a, his choice, I think. <laughs> you got something for the museum? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I think I just want to put in the the animated opening. Uh, not because I think it's, yep. like, the best or anything, but it really sets the tone for the movie really well. And it also, like, I think sells it as a more expensive movie than it is. Because, you know, it's full moon, and this is definitely when they had some money. But you know it was still going to be super low budget. Like, it's full moon. Like, it's a full moon movie. Circa 93. It's not going to be like a $5 billion movie. <laughs> so it's going to be cheap. But with having the animated opening, you know, it's very like, uh, you know, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids or whatever. So it feels like a big, big movie. Yeah, I think this movie felt bigger than its budget at times. Yeah, and I think cool. that's great. Yeah, so. I think it, it worked. They figured it out really mm-hmm. nicely. That's going to end it for remote. Ooh, we're doing a short one this week. Sounds good. Wow. I love okay. It. And then next week, I think we're gonna take a break from it and then uh, do a newer movie, uh, which will also have little little bitty creatures. I'm not gonna say the name. But you'll figure it out. And uh, yeah, and then we'll and then we'll continue on with this. And look at this. Look at all that we're bringing you here. This is gonna be an amazing month. Yeah, it's gonna be super fun. Flashback to 90s kids uh, nostalgia. 90s kids VHSs, very specifically. These were movies that I grew up with, so it's nice. (laughs) And these, I don't even think you... Well, Prehistoria 3 is probably on DVD. Nope. It's not? Nope. Oh. So I don't think Josh Kirby is either. Uh, Some of the Josh Kirby's came out on an out-of-print DVD, but you can't get any more. But the no Blu-ray at all so yeah. really the vhs is still probably your best bet because the dvds went out of print so fast that's um, amazing i can't what do they only make like a you know five thousand units well and i think all six are on like two discs you know what i mean like it's oh, like okay. it's like they crammed them all on there too and they were all the vhs transfers they weren't like cleaned up versions or anything like that it was okay. just some cheapy company that probably full moon made a quick buck on and they put them out and then the company's probably gone now <laughs> yeah, just a fly by <laughs> yeah mafia uh like style <laughs> distribution company yeah so yeah uh, they, they really a lot of uh, everything that's on the table right now your best bet is to catch it on vhs so that's pretty cool all right we'll see you next week for a little bitty monster movie bye bye Hallelujah, Brother Milo. Praise the Lord.